Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This time it's the market watch, which I wanted to do weekly, but uh, to be honest, I did not have enough cards which um, were sold out or which have I have sold multiple times. So usually the cards that end up in my market watch are the ones that, you know, I sell out a playset of, I don't know, Dead Eye. And then I put the next playset up for sale, adjust the price, sell that again, adjust the price, and if I sell the third time, then it goes to the list because it's a hot card and you know it doesn't necessarily mean that my sales are the same as the general sales but here in no particular order are oh first thanks i got the first patreon and this is just it's an honor flesh and blood bobby thanks he's the first ever entering my patreon patreons and um yeah it's great i got 20 slots open if you want to join that's a great opportunity to support me and it's also a great motivation um yeah and i am really happy to do this i think the market watch i don't have to prepare too much i don't have to write a script or something which i don't which i never do and it's also not not fancy editing and stuff necessarily so i just like opening what i sold and talking about it I don't talk too much about the playability or in which decks this is featured and stuff. It's more like, yeah, I can see the collector's point and I can, can see the speculator's point because let's start with this. This is the front page. Let's go here. The best sellers. I don't know if this is sorted by the most sold copies or which generated the most revenue for card market. Um, but top items should, of course, be the cards which sell oftentimes. So, best seller is Dead Eye. Dead Eye is a ranger. And then we got Soraya, which is illusionist, light illusionist. And then Heat Seeker is ranger. And now, you will see the pattern. Immobilizing shot, ranger. Oh, I can open this one. Um, ranger. Generic. Ranger. You see, right? And then we got Assassin, Illusionist, Generic, Ninja. So, Shadow, again, Soraya, Assassin, Assassin, Ranger. This is Ranger as well. Uh, Illusionist, Generic, Generic, Assassin, and so on and so forth. So, in the last, when did I do the last update? On one and a half weeks, we did have the, um, let's call it, the leak that the next set after Outsiders, which comes out in two weeks, will be Dusk Till Dawn, which features light and shadow, just like Monarch. And a lot of people do speculate that a lot of those cards, which have been, you know, kind of dried and nobody had att paid attention and cared about those cards. Um, yeah, some of those uh, have been bought out in anticipation that, you know, they could go up because the next classes will use them again. I did not do that. I did not buy out any cards in the last time, which I, I buy out. I mean, a buyout would be something like if I go to this card and then say, oh, well, oh, this card is too cheap and it's very scarce. I'm going to buy everything above uh, under 20 bucks, right? So if I were to buy all these, then there would be only these 10 copies on the market for 25 plus. And then I could, you know, sell all this for 30. But in theory, I mean, if there's a reprint, if there's other decks which are better and people put them back on the market, if this price goes to 30, then others might sell their copies, which which they have gotten here for six, seven, uh, eight bucks. Of course, in theory, man, it's always like, yeah, this could work out, but um, usually the price does not tend to stay up there. So anyhow, I'm saving my money for outsiders. I do, I will do mass box openings. I will open every case here on this channel. It's going to be fun as well. Um, by the way, on Sunday I am opening. I, I did open. On Sunday I will release the video of Uprising. That's a cool set as well. And then in two weeks we should have outsiders. I hope I get my cases. I mean I, I pre-ordered them from an LGS and if I don't get their allocation or do have some problems, well, uh, I might miss the uh, I might miss the release date and it's pretty crucial, right? Like 
the very first day when card markets a uh, card market lists them for everyone and I can put my prices up um, yeah usually prices race to the bottom and go down really quick and if I miss the first weekend if I can get them on Monday man I would lose like 10 15 20 percent by then so I'm gonna have to be quick and I'm gonna have to get these cards on Friday anyhow so this is my list in no particular order the Iris of Reality in Cold Foil LGS has been around 10 bucks all the time, then went up to about 20, and now it's sitting here at 40. Yeah, there are two copies for 30, and I don't know. If you're quick, you could get those. I do not expect the price to go down anytime soon because it's an illusionist weapon. Yeah, anticipation for Dust Till Dawn. So, I do have one or more copies up for sale. Yes, I still do have some. Um, yeah, I've gotten them every once in a while. I could, what I thought about, I could show on Patreon is my buys. So I can go, I can log in, go to my, uh, my buys, search for this card and that would show me every order I did, the date and all the, the, the other copy, the other cards I have had in this order. And so I could see at what time did I buy and what did I pay for it? Um, I think that would be a cool thing, but I do not think that I'm, I don't think that I'm going to publish all my buys on YouTube, especially I'm going to have to find a way to, you know, do it like this and then hide the seller's name because I don't want to uh, publish addresses and stuff, but I just had that in my head. The, the first patron, the only patron I do have right now, because patron is pretty new, um, he said he, you know, doesn't expect any kind of special content he just wants to support me and i think that's pretty it's very cool so next up i did sell a lot of was monarch first rainbow fall tome of divinity uh yeah it has been about below five bucks or three months four months yeah it's still one at five bucks. Uh, get it if you can. I do expect this to be uh, uh, speculated on. I mean, 31 available items. That's not much. And Monarch First. I don't know if there is many people opening this. I do expect Monarch First box prices to go up again. No, Monarch First is not going to 1,000. But um, the price for a case being 500 now. If I do have money left after Outsiders, I'm gonna buy for 500. No problem at all. If this goes to 650 or 700, yeah, I think there's other better opportunities. But yeah, Monarch, the Fable, the, the Legendaries, so Cold Foil, I mean, people want that stuff. So there is not much of this left. I did sell a lot of those copies. And then, oh yeah. The Rainbow Foil invokes Raya. I've had so many of those. You've seen my box openings. This is this is a dynasty that came out yeah exactly four months ago. I did pull you know eight or nine copies and I, I did sell for 20, 25, 30, 35, and now I mean 35 was my last sale, I guess. And do I have more? Yeah, I do have more. So I just upped the price because this is ridiculous. Everybody is buying this, as you've seen on the front page. Also the uh, Marvel I do have the Marvel in my collection and I'm not going to sell this, but I think it's going to be more expensive just because people think, you know, illusionist, light, light, light illusionist, there will be a lot of stuff more in the next set. So it's a cool game, I'm playing it and, you know, if this has been a good play, keeping all those and not selling them for 15, then I'm pretty happy. And the Emperor, there should be something happened to the Emperor as well, it, it dropped below 10 bucks and this is stupid. Knock. Yeah, I did sell knock. Did I sell out? Oh. I don't have any knocks anymore, or do I? Yeah, I do. I do have one copy. This is stupid. I don't know where to get those from. So if you want to get rid of your old cards, I'm more than happy to take your collections. I will give you 80% of card market low, which I think is a very fair price. Um, and you get store credits and can buy whatever you want from me. I also did decide to sell more magic seal stuff because I've got uh, tons of 
sealed stuff from magic also older stuff i did if you are interested i am not publishing this anymore because it doesn't interest anybody so yesterday i did take all the amounts and the prices for all the magic products if you want to take a quick look i'm scrolling through here just give me those few seconds i know it's not flesh and blood content but i did check on the prices and some of those really went up some of those really went down so these are some buy opportunities i don't care about magic too much anymore had to do with basically it's just because i want to go all in with flesh and blood i am going to sell a lot of sealed stuff here and i'm just going to basically trade it i'm going to sell it on card market and then i'm going to buy new stuff on card market buy sealed stuff on card market so expect me to talk about that in the future next up we got rapid fire the regular version yes it has been a one buck all the time it is arcane rising it is a super rare uh, one buck is stupid and it's still down here i did sell a ton and do i have more i should no i should prepare this before here yes i do have more if i sell them for two bucks a piece i get to keep 144 so that's 14 four percent over this let's call it minimum or low while well, it drops anyhow don't care about that it's just basically what i do is this i sell rapid fire and i see okay i can I get it for one euro shipping aside i'm gonna have to calculate that as well so if i sell it for two i'm just going like this 154 after card market fee which is five percent after taxes marriage dollar which is 19 percent I get to keep about 0.78 percent so 154 and then and then i'm thinking about how much do i sell per month like if i have a month where i sell for ten thousand, and i make ten percent that's a thousand that doesn't that's not enough by far that's that's not enough to pay my bills so if i earn ten percent and sell for 10,000, I just, I can't get this card for 130. It's just not worth it. I'm gonna have to make more than 20% cash flow from everything that I sell. If I have a month where I only sell 10,000 and I have 20% of gains, gains, yeah, it's an average, right? Some, some cards give me 20%, some cards give me 40%, so, this card would give me 54% if I were to get it for a buck, but I just, that's my calculation, right? If somebody offers me, if somebody offers me this card, well, now it's below one euro, but card market low has been one. I was constantly thinking about how often do I think I can sell it? This card is pretty hot. I'm going to sell it and turn over the money and can invest it into something else. That's a good buy. Like if I do have cards, expensive cards, which are not bought as often, like if I have this in my inventory for one year or two years, I don't think that, you know, 20, 30% would be enough to pay my bills. So I'm going to have to decide how liquid is the card, how, how much percent do I want to earn, and if I do have... 10 cent cards which i can sell for 15 cent well that's 50 percent but in total value that produces so much work right if i sell 100 cards of this and i can make i don't know let's say i can make 54 percent that's 54 bucks for how much time does it take 100 cards 100 copies in one easy 10 times 10 mm, takes me 40 minutes 20 times 5? I don't know. I play, I sell play sets. And if I, this is just, it is unscripted, right? I'm just talking and also don't <clears throat> know how to express myself in English sometimes. But if I sell 100 copies, 50 times 2 copies, which is an average. Some collectors buy 1 copy, some players buy a play set of 3. Most of them, um, a lot of them buy for Blitz, just 2. So, 2 copies per sale. 50 sales takes four minutes per sale well you know 200 minutes that's three hours and 20 minutes for 54 bucks 
it looks very good but it's just the card price is so low i have so much work which i like i do like it i i love getting orders in anytime so if i get orders at midnight and i'm still awake that's the very very first thing i do i always fulfill my orders as fast as i can and um i do like it i do like getting out all these cards and sorting them and thinking about where did i get these from how you know how good were they in play and yeah well anyhow i did set my bar to 30 percent because that way if i have months where I do sell 10,000 bucks. I would get to keep 3,000 before taxes. And then we have different taxes, right? We have the uh, Gewerbesteuer, which is the tax for your business. I think I talked about it for a bit before. I mean, this is not a, a whiteboard video. This should be, just be a market watch. So let's just stop this. At the end of the year, I do have my own tax, which the earnings of the company go to my own funds and then I'm gonna have to pay more tax so I get to keep you know half of it so that's the problem with all these calculations I do like the work and I don't care if it's small numbers but all in all it's not it's not if I see this number say oh this is five bucks I can sell this for 10. Wow I can double my price no no way this comes from Switzerland I do have to pay import taxes when i get this and shipping and then i don't know this is just that's a whole nother topic for itself i did sell out this card poison the tips regular non-foil i do not have a single one of these left and there's just 20 here and i think five six bucks is stupid low it's a majestic crucible crucible with the bnx set which goes up in seal prices and then the single prices will follow there's no way no way you can change that this is a ranger card and people will buy this if somebody needs a playset and sees this for 735 that's 22 plus shipping 24 including tracking to my door eight per copy man i should do this right now i should i should really do this but anyhow that's one copy i what that's one card i sold out three of a kind yeah i do have more of those uh yes i do i did sell a lot the price has always been hovering below 10 on average and now it's going to be above 10 there is plenty on the market but i do see um the rainbow foil is also which are sold a lot of and i do have a lot of this is a price has been below 20 as you can see and then up to 25 at the beginning of this year and now everybody says oh my ranger is going to be cool outsiders will come out 40 bucks 43 43 and now card market low is at 38 just until one and a half months ago 20 bucks was the normal price and now it's twice that i do have some a good amount of copies left so i'm pretty confident that this has been a good play right 46 copies of beacon of victory unlimited non-foil are available this is not much price has always been between one and two bucks how much do i sell this for there 250 so yeah basically I did sell so many copies that I should raise the price but there are so many below my price that um, oh yeah sapphire cards always one cent less I do not take the time to update my prices and always undercut my competitions I don't care at all I I did realize it's not about the price to most buyers if you if you go to if you use the shopping wizard and you don't care which um, buyer it comes from well you will get those from here because it's just one cent less and it will not show my inventory i don't care i just i'm not updating i did this with world of warcraft i did update every second evening every second day in the evening i did go through my cards and you know i sorted them by cards over 100 and then adjusted the price to comps to competitions or to compare comparing orders and then between 50 and 100 and then like 
depending on how much time this took me, I would do between 10 and 20. And every once in a while, every once, maybe one time a week, I did also update some cards under 10. But these prices, I would never adjust them. If there was a way to do this automatically, I know a lot of sellers would do this. I am not doing this because I know I want, I know how much I want from this card, right? It doesn't matter if it's 249 or 247, but the time and effort to put in to go through every of those cards. No, I mean, there are so many thousands of cards in Flesh and Blood right now, which I do have in my inventory. And then, no, it just doesn't make any sense. I sell less that way, who cares? So, next card Soul Shield, regular version, unlimited. I do have some more up for sale, but I did sell a lot. Price is always, you know, under 10. But, yeah. I always look at these numbers. How many how many available items are there and what do I think? Are people buying this or selling this? I think right now they're buying the light cards. And then how many will be opened and how many will be put on the market for different reasons. The first reason being somebody seeing, oh, there's a market watch video. Oh, I see Soul Shield going above 10. Well, this card is not... The price isn't increasing as much as some other examples, but yeah, I think this card can go up in value because there is not much following and being put on the market. And then if you go to, you know, sort by cards from Germany, I'm going to do this one time right, right now. Um, seller location, Germany. Sorry, this is a small picture. I should do this bigger. Yeah, you got a whole different picture because my office right here, I do have one competition, one professional seller. This is just an excellent version. So I think the price is pretty fair, pretty fair. I do have some near mints from, you know, uh, private sellers. And that's, an that's another whole topic for itself because of this fear of being forced to pay taxes and having to open a business there was a there was a card market announcement i'm gonna go with over this real quick where's the news where's the news at is it only yeah no um this one right here in case you missed it um did they delete it wow what i could search it i do have it in discord on the german flesh and blood discord uh, somebody posted it there yes they did delete this news wow well then i'm going to summarize it real quick um if you sell if you do private sales in the european union so this comes from the eu if you do private sales on any platforms, eBay, eBay clients, like card markets, Kleider, who knows, wherever um, they have, you have your user account and official data, also card market, and they publish this, they will automatically be forced to, uh, they will automatically report your earnings to the Bundeszentralamt für Steuern, so for the uh, central um, office of taxes in Germany. If you if you pay more if you do more than 30 sales per year in 2023 or if you sell for more than 2000 euros per year then you automatically get reported to this tax office and yes if you surpass these and this this is not just oh you can sell for 1900 on card market and 1900 on ebay no no no. it's uh, it's a total number of sales per year and if you sell cards come on 2000 calculate it yourselves that's a thousand uh, 167 per month uh 20, why oh my 2000 divided by 12 yeah 167 per month i think that's five bucks a day if you have uh, if you have cards which cost a lot, anyhow, they will report this. 
they will get back to you and reach out and say hey you sold so much this isn't private this is uh you know you do this for uh generating income and now you will have to open a business do bookkeeping which i have to do i do like it but i know most people don't like putting all these numbers up and then that that was a reason where a lot of people contacted me and told me to sell their collection and told me they will take their inventory off of card market i also do know people who said i don't fucking care i'm just going to get into this fight with this uh with these people at these um, uh, offices and yeah that that was a point when I did see a, an up in sales from my end because a lot of private copies uh, disappear from the market well yeah red in the ledger you can go to your local game store and chain and, and take your folder with you and then just you know trade cards it's a trading card game <laughs> you don't have to sell and buy so I do have more copies up for sale, eight bucks. Yeah, I did sell it for. Uh, I did sell a good amount of those, and I I'm not perfectly sure how much how many I have left. I could look it up, but that's not a part for Market Watch. Yeah, this card has been you know three bucks, four or five bucks. These prices will be over with pretty soon. Dead Eye regular version look at this six bucks was the normal price and now we're at eight card market low a sell for almost 15 and then why do i oh i don't have a single copy of those anymore so please give me your collection <laughs> i tip i pay top monies um yeah i did get a lot of collections with all your cards with cards from Welcome to Wrath, Arkin Rising and um, Crucible. Yes, I also did got collections from Tales of Aria and Monarch, but that's it. The newer ones, especially the most recent Dynasty, I do not get cards. I very rarely do I get new cards as a part of collection when somebody wants to get rid of it. Um, so that I am pretty much I ran out of those. I don't know how to get new ones, except for I'm going to do more box openings of those. But Outsiders comes out next, and then there will be a break for all the other sets. I don't know. We will see. Surgical Extraction, of course. Um, you see my box opening. I had one copy. I put it up for sale. It was sold instantly. Oh, and another thing. I did um, sort through my bulk because I've been looking for some other Assassin cards. And I've been looking through the uh, rare slot and then I found two surgical extractions in my rare bulk. And this, that, that was the point when I went through all my bulk, also the common cards, and I found even more rares in the common slots. But yeah, I there should be these two surgical extractions, which have been going into the uh, rare pile, should be on video because everything I opened... And that went into my book was on camera, so it would be cool to see the opening where I get the surgical extraction and just put it into the book and don't see it. That was at the beginning, right? I did sell this card for five bucks and then ten bucks and then twenty. So until I found out this is going to be a twenty-five card, and then I found out this is going this is short printed fifty percent and this should be a fifty bucks card. So it should I still send that this should be a 50 bucks card 50 bucks for one non foil majestic that's is that's heavy i have the feeling that this video is getting way too long but let's look at the other ones great library of solana yes this is a card which has been a little above 100 120 at the in the latest time and then you see here 155 and then 200 and now it's at 210 yes there were rumors of salty uh, salty whale buying out all this and he said i only got the cold foil copies and this is only tcg players so in the us right here we are looking at the european stats and this isn't cold foil this is unlimited and not in the us but still this card is at 210 and if somebody buys this it's already at 230 which is twice the price of what it has been last month 
So, wow, way to go. Everybody's just anticipating this. It's not basic. Like, I get my information from all kinds of different sources. And what I read or watch is that this is not, this is more because of the speculation of Dust Till Dawn and people following this hot trend and this hype and also buying because they think the price is going up because others buy this for playing in the next set, in the next set after the next one. And the smaller fraction of uh, people buying this, anticipating this is going to be cool for PvE. So landmarks should be used there. If you don't do PvP but PvE together with somebody else, this should do something, but that's not the reason why people bought it out this time here. I do not have any of those up for sale no nope, that was my last copy i do have one in my own personal collection but yeah pulping pulping red look at it one buck all the time and now it's at four four is card market low um yes i do have more um i did see this coming to be honest um the monarch cards there were a lot of sales even before even before i mean okay so the price has been here until at the beginning of February. And this was not the point when anybody leaked any information about Dust Till Dawn. Um, this was not the point when anybody... Um, it, we knew Arcane Rising is getting expensive, Welcome to Wrath is getting expensive, and now we know Monarch should be getting expensive, but Brute Action from Monarch um that just has to do something with this card in particular being played in a lot of decks i correct me if i'm wrong if you have any other information about pulping i didn't find it i didn't follow any um talkings about pulping maybe it's just a lot of group players who think well at the next big tournament oh lss did do some mismanagement with the uh, dates because there are some big tournaments at the same time two or three at the same time you will have to separate the players and the judges and then we have we will have tournaments which are which have low um uh, where not many people come and attend and play that will look bad just because we'll have several at the same time but we shall see how this turns out so extended art, yes, the LGS version, I do have more. I did sell a lot. And as you can see, this card has been at 250 coin. That was in January. And then I jumped to four. And now it jumped to five. And the card market low is five. But this is getting so ridiculous. I should buy this card, to be honest. Right now, I should buy this. And then what I would do is I would go through this inventory and look through 13,000 cards and look for anything I can get and additionally to that because uh, I could save on shipping um, and that's a ton of work oh yeah I see I see something like I have to decide this instantly by seeing the picture by just recalling how much is this card worth because I know I sell this for 60 I do have two copies left I would buy this for oh I still sorted it by German um, yeah, for 10 cents, that's great. I, I would get those. Uh, yeah, no worries. And then I would just get through all these cards. The problem is it only shows me 300 hits. And so I would have to filter it by, you know, oh, I am not locked in. How? Uh, yeah, by expansion. So I would look for the, uh, no, not by expansion. It doesn't let me sort this by rarity here. So the way I do this, I'll look for the fables, and then I'll look for the promos, and then I'll take my time going through all these promos. Oh, and it sell all my crack baubles and cold fall to one seller, uh, to one buyer. He wanted all my copies from all kinds of different um, sets, editions, and he also also wanted all my LGS promos. 
And yeah, I did sell it to him. I usually I would say, no, sorry, I don't want to be bought out, but the price was okay. I've given him, I don't know, 10% of my price and that's all good. So like if I have the chance to get this for one buck, this brings me into this, into this, into this work, which I didn't plan, right? I'm going to update just because I see, I am looking at this card and I say, okay, five bucks right now is too cheap. I'm going to buy this put it into my basket and then I see okay I could save on shipping by just adding you know I don't know from Poland 17 more cards or 16 uh, basically for free shipping so this is why I look through all this inventory and then this just starts and then I look at the other cards and say okay I saw a lot of crack bubbles I need those how much does it cost with this guy so what I do is I don't know I don't know why I talk too much about this because you just want to see a market watch you know I just look for his name and then there it is 250 I say no that's that's my price no I would buy this for one or 150 so that's no good and then I'm just going through all these cards you know and basically saying I know which cards I do have in stock I know which cards I did sell or a lot of so hey spending cold foil I do know I do have more copies of this yes there it is three I only sell three or four at the same time as you know and um the thing is this is funny it shows me pounds when i'm not locked in huh. um but only here <laughs> these others are euros so i know i sold a lot of haze bendings and this is also why i upped the price to twice the card market low roughly because if it's such a hard card somebody will buy it um, so I go here and I see this price for 10 it's half the price I would probably get this as well just because I know I've sold it for 15 and then you know I have this in my head 15 15 times 77 that's 15.5 uh, percent and then I would you know I would decide I would I sell this card in the next weeks or months and then 15 percent is cool it's all good and then I probably get this one and then and so on and so forth and that's also a good way to get new cards um popping red c oh we just opened this one right here that's why i got there but yeah i could i could do this live but it takes hours and hours to go through inventories of people and most of the times i don't have to click on the card because i know well, we've lightning in red, three bucks is too expensive. Then, you know, I know I have it here for three bucks, the excellent copy, and then 333, the near mint copies. So I know three bucks is my price or right about there. I don't even have to click on this. So I, you know, the more often I do this, the more, the faster it gets because I, I, usually, I usually know, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, data doll, I need this. Well, in this case I don't. But, you know, I would see, yeah, that's a good price, 40 bucks, okay. And then I'll just go through there, right? Legendaries, I did get some legendaries. Doomsday, that's a $29 card. Emperor is cold foil, should be 60. What is this? Yeah, 29, no, it's 30. And this one, oh my. What is happening? This is a cold phone. There's only 60 on the market. If they ever bring out more, if they ever bring out more cards that, that, you know, everybody's playing red cards. Come on, who cares about that? This is just, if, if your hero is royal, if they bring out more cards of that, this card will be so expensive. 50 bucks, come on. This is just pathetic. And here's another problem. 50 bucks looks like a lot. This guy sells it for 35. So now I want the calculator. 50 times 77, 3850. Yeah, if I buy this, there is nothing to earn from me. It's less than 10%, including shipping. I will get this for 37. I no gains, nothing at all. If I sell this copy, I cannot get another one. So I should, with a card that is hot, I will have to up the price to around about 55. 
and if I sell this, and this is still here, that has to be the other factor, then I could get it and make some percent out of this. But yeah, let's just, you know, I'm going to different directions far too often. The rainbow fall, yes, as you can see, I do have more for sale. There's 15 copies on the market. This is just, this is just, this could be a target for a buyout, right? You have the non-foil version, which is at four. Card market low is at four. And it ranges up to 10. And then you have the uh, rainbow foil version, which starts at 250. The right, the <laughs> you get this, right? I do sell this for seven. And I do sell the non-foil version for six. So that spread is also wrong. I sh this should be lower, or the foil version should be higher. But I do have a lot of those copies, so this is why I can afford selling this for seven. And if I do sell it, well, then I may up the price. But this is a this is a perfect example for a buyout. These English ones, well, yeah, if I order that card and I pay six bucks extra, import taxes, that it's just there's no gains. But those cards for three, including shipping, that's five. I should get them. The German cards, including shipping, that's six up until almost seven. I should buy all those. There's almost only Germans. This is crazy. So basically what I'm saying, I should buy every single copy of these. Every single one. And then there's just one for 750 and that should put the price up to 10. This is the foil version. And there's 15 copies on the market. Nobody's opening Monarch. This is mind blowing, right? Isn't it? I know there is people I know. For instance, this one right here. I've seen this name. I've bought a collection from him way at the beginning when I started with Flesh and Blood. This was from another Discord from MTG with Patrick. Empty Game with Patrick. This is a user there. He's pretty active. He sold his collection and I bought it from him. It was pretty cool for both sides. And he just <clears throat> he just saw that a lot of common of bulk on rare bulk have been increasing in price time X times. So he just basically he had a lot of bulk left. He he searched for all his good bulk and then he's put it up for sale. 2,000 sales. Well, wow. oh yeah, that's another thing. I got 7,746 sales. And I can be a power seller as soon as 20,000 sales. It's going to take some more years at the pace that I'm at. And the advantage of being a power seller are really, really not not big here here is the only power seller on this page 31,000 sales well not with single cards I guess um, basically you still have 5% fees the only difference is you instantly get the money if I sell something a package or tracked shipping I ship it the card is at the money is at card market and if the user um, confirms the arrival then I get the money and as a power seller, you instantly get the money. And if there's problems, then while well, card market is rearranging this with the support afterwards. But that's it. It's that's the only advantage. Yes, you do have some other. Oh, I forgot about that. I think maybe they deleted this as well. Uh, um. No, I don't find it right now. And this video is way too long. There is one more advantage, but it really doesn't, it, it doesn't pay out. It's just, here's the last card, Dorothea. There, this is a, uh, this is a promo. I <clears throat> do have one more copy. Uh, why does it, oh yeah. With its stupid dent in the corner. And um, yeah. That price also has been going up. It was below 20 and now it's at 30. 50% more than, you know, at the beginning of the year. Every once in a while I bought this. I bought this for... 
I don't know. This should be this should be a good video. I I should do a market watch and then look how much did I pay for certain cards. I do not do buyouts, but every once in a while, just like I showed you, I'll go to one seller, go through his whole inventory, and then get everything. And if I find the promos, even if they're a little more expensive than I would be willing to pay, I would just get them. Titan's Fist, come on. This was at six bucks and I sold so many of those. I asked in Discord, so what's the reason why this is going up? I guess it was the ban of the other cards for the Guardian. Um, this is the... Titan's Fist is a common, it's a token. So it's basically worthless if you want to play it. And this version, well, I did put it up for 40 because I sold so many of those. I thought this was be a hyped, bought out card. I think I can lower the price again. I do have more copies. Yeah, that was a story on its own. Man, I could go over so many cards, but these were the ones that I've been writing up for now. And um, yeah, it's there's a lot to talk about, even though I don't have to talk about, you know, I had dead eye in my deck when I did this rush thing and I've been at this tournament and I, you know, made first place because of that. I, I don't have such stories because I'm a noob. But I do know when I got those, I mean, basically Dynasty, most, uh, basically all of them, I did get, you know, from box openings. And I think it's the right way to put three or four copies up for sale and then adjust the price. Because if I get 25 copies out of box breaks and put it up for sale for five bucks and then one person buys all 25 copies for five euros each and now it's at 13, well, I would feel stupid because, you know, I, I live from this, I do this full time, I, I, have to, I have to make some gains somewhere and yeah. I think that's the right way. And now I have a problem. I need more dead eyes. Can you sell me dead eyes? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Till the next one. Bye bye.